And given how important that's going to be for the rest of your life, um, not well, trying it's going to be is hard. There, is there a reason why men value it so much more? Like, is it yes. like, why do you guys like, why does your life revolve around it so much? I'm well, so curious. You, you mentioned this earlier and you yeah. said a phrase that was so accurate yeah. that I wanted to like say something. Why that. didn't you? To, well, because I think it's good to map what somebody thinks first. Yeah. Um, but now I'll go back to it and say, you said they're obsessed with vagina. Yes. Both of those words are accurate. <laughs> Literally obsessed. Why? And well, evolution has guaranteed it, right? Yeah. So I didn't do anything to want that. I didn't even grow up yeah. with pornography. So, I mean, it was there, but yeah. it's really hard to get a hold of. Mm -hmm. So um, until I was probably 25, I maybe saw... <laughs> 10 different women. This but it didn't hijack your young, because your prefrontal cortex would have been developed by then. No. So yeah. Well, like, by the time, by yeah, the time yeah, you yeah. got in, it, in so it wasn't hijacked. In my mid-20s yeah. for sure. But mm -hmm. um, pornography did completely derail me when I was a kid. I actually went on a trip mm -hmm. when I was like 18. So I, I went on it back to back. So one year I was either 16 or 17, can't remember exactly, and then 18. Mm. And when I went and wasn't old enough to buy a Playboy magazine, I actually think it was Penthouse, but I wasn't old enough <laughs> Enough to buy it I went and hung out with everybody and had like a little summer romance mm -hmm. no sex or anything but it was just because I had no game in high school but anyway <laughs> it was unbelievable it's one of the strongest most interesting memories of my childhood really? the most men year, can report report when they first saw sex, um, pornography because it has such an impact on their brain well no 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 the the yeah. year without pornography yeah. becomes one of the most important memories mm -hmm. of my childhood then the next year when I could buy a pornography magazine, I just spent the whole time in the hotel reading all the smutty articles. <laughs> and so I ended up being kind of ashamed of that trip because I was like, wait, last year when I didn't have this, I had such a ball because I engaged with everybody. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm in the grips of this thing that has grabbed a hold of my brain, I did something that I look back on and go, it wasn't as profound. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, the amplitude of the being engrossed in the sex is very, very high amplitude, mm -hmm. but it was devoid of meaning. Mm -hmm. So thankfully I had that sort of idea reinforced early on yeah. that connections with people are far more Meaningful. like emotionally satisfying. Yeah. And so that, that was good and that planted something in my head, but it also makes me deeply concerned for people that just have unfettered access to pornography all the time, every day. Yeah. And the way that it will, um, cause you to when you don't have a prefrontal cortex just be obsessed with that to the exclusion yeah. of the other things and when you're young if you don't have these profound experiences you don't have anything to compare to yeah. because you never go out and don't have a phone and don't have access to porn and but the thing is it's just uh, one thing that men, that men don't realize is how much it is the miseducation of sex it's not actually teaching men how to make love it teaches them how to make hate they literally just learn sexual violence and they learn degradation which girls I'm not saying that they're perfect some of them love that but they love that in the short run they then want to transition into normal like love making if they really love you and care about you and they get back to being like you know women that just want to cuddles and on this that, and the other because that's what we're primarily driven by a woman that wants you know to be thrown around for the rest of her life has probably had some kind of damage because it's usually they kind of settle down they want that here and there but usually they settle down with it the problem with that is men get used to that way of making love and they can only access that in either hyper promiscuous women or in short term casual relationships you can't get that in a 20-year marriage all the time because there'll be times where she's like no 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 because she's comfortable enough to say no leave my hair alone today so whereas they can't they can only access that in really short term or really promiscuous women so they end up being sexually compatible with women who are hyper promiscuous and when you're meeting a woman who's hyper promiscuous she's going to be 10 times more promiscuous than you because she's got leverage a promiscuous woman has far more men available to her than a promiscuous man so they become compatible on this very extrinsic value they become compatible and then they end up losing her to that promiscuity or they just look for short-term mating short-term mating because that's the only woman that can maintain that kind of behavior because she's only with you for a couple of months and then she can do it and then she leaves so they, it gets them almost into a sociopathic way of making love it's not actually what women uh, find attractive and the the thing is they think they're learning all these skills and moves but if you speak to women they are far more uh, f satisfied with men who have not watched porn or been in long-term relationships compared to men who do short-term one-night stands some men will be like oh i slept with 100 girls this year if you've slept with so many men again i'm sorry so many women and you've got loads of one-night stands behind your belts that is an indicator you are not good at sex the man that actually has more long-term relationships is far better 
better and farm and this is there's been so much research to support this because it, you don't have any repeat customers if you're just doing one night stands so you don't learn anything about women and you don't learn what pleases them what doesn't please them whereas men that have been in long-term relationships fewer women but have been there with them longer they learn what, how to read a woman's body whereas porn addicts learn how to just reenact moves and there's a complete difference in them and women are looking for men who let, read her body rather than somebody who just reads a script that they saw on Pornhub. Okay, I'm going to take you into nuanced waters. Mm -hmm. um, everything you said makes total sense for maybe the average person, somebody that doesn't have access to self-awareness, whatever. Um, going back to this idea of obsessed with vagina, yeah. um, experiencing more women for sure made me better at sex, mm -hmm. even though um, some of them were very brief encounters, no yeah. repeat customers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. Because if one of them is honest with you about what they like, yeah. then uh, all of a sudden it's like, yeah. oh, whoa, like I, I never would have thought of that. That's really interesting. So little bits of feedback. Yeah. But then yeah. doesn't that then also suggest then women who've had more experience are going to be better at sex? Almost certainly. Yeah. And therefore, how do men fall in love? through sex. So they're going to end up falling in love with women who are more promiscuous. Um, I, something breaks for me with my personality yeah. on that train. So mm -hmm. again, you're probably your speaking to okay. averages. And I'm speaking to younger, I think, generation that grew up on like you know, Instagram and that, that is their preferences. Mm. Um, and I haven't experienced loyalty in relationships. But if we are suggesting that more experience leads to better sex, then men always fall in love with the woman that gives them the best sex. They're going to fall in love with the more promiscuous woman overall in, in the real world. That's who they're going to be most attached to. And therefore, what are we rewarding? And then we're complaining that women are so liberal and women are no longer mothers and women. 